We're with Chris Halfpenny, second year head coach of Fighting Irish Women's Lacrosse. Coach, glad to have you with us. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. So any truth to the rumor you guys got the start time wrong at the Stanford game and just thought it started an hour later? You know, um, I thought that myself, but actually uh, we look at that as a little uh, fine tuning in the first half and getting back to doing what we do in the second half. Well, it was quite a comeback. Tell us a little bit about the tale of two halves, what, exactly. what, how the first half went and then how you adjusted. Yeah. Well, actually, um, we came out of the gates, looked really good. Girls were rested, ready to go, um, very much on fire to get the season started after all of our preparations. And the first whistle went off, and we went back and forth for a little bit, got the um, game going with the first goal, which was beautiful from a senior to senior connection um, back by the crease. And then we just settled in, and it looked like we were a step behind. You know, um, our team didn't panic, which I was thrilled about. We just started doing some things um, differently than we typically do. Uh, went into the halftime down seven to two. Uh, I can be honest when I tell you that that is not exactly the dream I had the night before. Um, you know, but the beautiful thing about our team is we had five weeks of incredible preparation and we prepare for A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. And um, we knew the adjustments we had to make, um, went into the locker room and credit to my team. I mean, realistically, our leadership was outstanding. I came in there and matter of fact, one of my freshmen was kind of lounging back there and um, lo and behold, it was Steph Paragallo who got Big East Defender of the Week. So they were back there, they were calm. We said, hey, throw that first half out. We'll learn from it when we get home but nothing we can do about it. Let's take a look at the clock. We've got 30 minutes to go. Let's get back to um, hitting that practice speed where we know we can be successful. Here are the adjustments. Let's go and <laughs> holy smokes, did they make those adjustments for a 10-3 second half to come out with a W. Yeah, you know, you mentioned uh, speed and you've, you've designed this to be a high octane team. Yes. It's got to help you in a situation where you're behind like that, where you, you can come back. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, making some adjustments um, with positioning, making some adjustments in our defense where we could manipulate um, Stanford so that if, in fact, we did get beat, we got beat to where we wanted to. And then we could utilize that speed that we have both in our ride, in the transition, and at both ends of the ball. Um, you know, we want to be able to take our opponents out of their comfort zone, and I think we did exactly that. Oh, that's great. Um, you mentioned leadership at a time like that. You've got to have good internal leadership. Talk, talk to us a little bit about the leaders of this year's team. Yeah, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey with the senior class and with our captains, as a matter of fact. Um, we did wait until January to name our captains, and um, Jenny Granger, a senior attacker, and Margaret Smith, who was a junior midfielder, were ultimately named captain by both their team and their coaches, um, so their peer and their coaches, and they've done a really good job. They're natural leaders by example. They work hard, they play hard, um, they do things the right way, and we we surrounded them with a leadership council this year so that they could get that added depth that they really need when the going gets tough at times or when we just want some extra electric energy around them. So we were able to build um, players that have been going through the Rosenthal Leadership Academy, um, our blogger, our SAC rep, and the beauty of that is putting all those personalities together while some have different strengths than others. When you put them all together, they're really a force to reckon. Oh, that's great. Year two, do you feel like your imprint is fully on the team now? It's a process. Um, I do. I feel as though as we come into this year, the wonderful piece of even though we added two new assistants and 10 freshmen, the returners really knew what to expect. Um, they knew what the standards were. We're continuing to develop those you know, gold standards for the Irish lacrosse program this year. And we will be drawing off the past as we continue to go through um, the present and create the future. But it's been nice to see um, the team fully embrace the systems that we're going to be running um, to fully embrace the process that it actually takes to fully, um, I would say, develop into what we want to be. You mentioned new, new staff. Yeah. Uh, you built you built a pretty interesting staff uh, in the off season. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, um, we had a little turnover, and you know, when one door closes, another one opens. And I truly feel blessed to be bringing two amazing alumni back to the program um, and back to Notre Dame. One back to the program, Jill Byers, a four-time All-American. Um, it doesn't get better than Jill. I mean, she knows exactly what she's doing. Uh, she let her actions do the talking for her here in her four years. And after she had three years of strong experience in the Ivy League, um, we brought her back home, um, and she does truly call this home to be our offensive coordinator. Um, and then we also 
also had another change and decided to keep um, a male mentality on our staff, someone that knows the men's game very, very well. Um, the men's lacrosse face-off specialist who was a 2011 grad and Jake Marmel flipped over to the women's side um, to help us get a little bit more of that high octane um, defensive model that we really wanted to get in, um, that high pressure that's very, very organized. And um, we brought him back and really, you know, I feel like I've developed um, a right arm and a left arm with two assistants that um, bring something to the team that we didn't have before and they're absolutely helping us uh, get to where we want to go. Oh, that's great. You mentioned 10 freshmen. You don't want you to introduce us to all of them. It'll be here all afternoon, but <laughs> highlight a few for us that we should be looking for this yeah. season. Yeah, right out of the gate, um, we have the Stephs. That's what we call them, Stephanie Paragallo and Steph Toy. Stephanie Paragallo is a low defender out of Long Island, and she is just, I mean, when you say the word real deal, she's the real deal coming out of the Stanford game with four ground balls and two cost turnovers in her debut. Um, she's going to be, uh, I think, a cornerstone to that defense for the next four years. You'll be hearing a lot about Steph. She's hungry. Um, she's aggressive. She's exactly what we like to see back there. Steph Toy comes from New Jersey. She is the do-it-all midfielder. Um, she was able to get in there, get some time. She's um, wonderfully a left-handed player, but like I said, she's been relied on for years. She's a do-it-all. She can do it at both ends, and she'll. Um, I think we'll see a lot of her in the next four years. And then um, debuting in their game as well, Brie Custis in the midfield as well, kind of giving more depth um, to that midfield and the, and the freshman class as well, um, actually scored her first goal um, against Stanford off a beautiful feed from our senior. She can get up and down the field, has an incredible killer instinct um, out there. And then Kira McMullen uh, down on offense also got her debut. She is just a slippery, um, slippery one that knows how to find the back of the net and has a nose for the goal. So those four really stepped up big time for us. Um, the other six, it won't be long until everybody sees uh, their debuts as well. That's great. Um, you know, every, every year is a new year. You lost a great playmaker, um, one of the best oh, yeah. uh, ever. And uh, so, so how's the team different this year? And how, how do you replace those sorts of losses? Well, you know, um, we always foresee those losses. So what helps us to, um, to fulfill, the, I guess, fulfill the role and fill those shoes, because Maggie did quite a bit for us. Maggie Thomasitis was pretty incredible. But even last year, knowing that we were going to lose that, I had Maggie back there when she couldn't practice due to maybe um, needing extra rest on that four-year body that had uh, put a lot of points in the back of the net. We um, had her peer coach. I had her back there with me at X saying, hey, Mags, like, I want you to help me out here with Jenny and Jamie and Caitlin Brasco. And we would continue to um, work the same things that she was doing, but through everybody's hands. So already this year, you can see that that's coming into play. Um, you know, 10 point getters, and we had, I think, eight assists. And that's, that's huge. And really, that's Maggie's play transcending into um, our game this year. And so we thank her for that. You know, she left a legacy behind. And and everybody wants to be a part of it. So while we lost a big playmaker, the wonderful piece in this high octane offense and spread offense and multiple threats is that they're all taking a little bit of Maggie's play and making it their own this year. That's great. Before we let you go, introduce us to the Halfpenny family. Ah, the Halfpenny clan. So Team Halfpenny at home. Um, my husband, uh, Matt Halfpenny, he was a Division I coach for 16 years on the um, men's and women's uh, tennis circuit. And so I've got a coach at home that I can always bounce things off of, which I'm truly blessed to have. Um, thank goodness for his patience. And then my two little boys. So Team Halfpenny um, with my seven-year-old that's Jack Halfpenny in first grade, and then my little four-year-old Cole and they are our number one fans. They will be out with their Notre Dame lacrosse t-shirts. Um, the first thing they said to me when I walked through the door, they looked at me and they didn't even let me, let me get it out of my mouth. Mommy, we know you won. And they <laughs> gave me a huge hug. And then my four-year-old's quick question was, was it the red team, the blue team, or the green team? And I told them, we beat the red team, so. Um. Are they going to be tennis players or the cross players? You want to know what? To each their own. We're going to let them try a little bit of everything. We just wrapped up flag football. We'll see how that goes. Maybe a little soccer here and there. A little bit of everything. See what they really um, gravitate towards. Well, we love having them around. We love having you around. Thanks for joining us Thank today. Thank you so much, Jack.